Hey, it's Jerry with TradeTheFifth.com, just doing a weekly recap and uh, look forward along with the levels files that will be sent out here by Paul. Uh, start out first with the IWM. Uh, we still are headed towards this resistance area at 159.57. We did have, uh, for the week, we did have uh, an up week and we closed near the highs of the week, still, st still looking bullish on all of the major indexes uh, and I'm just doing the ETF run here because it's a little bit easier to do looking through these uh, so the IWM looks still strong I think 159.57 is the next level we're above the 200 period simple moving average on the daily uh, an interesting little indicator that I've got on here we'll talk through a couple charts um, that I just started looking at is the reverse engineering RSI and what it does is it takes price action in around this time period and you can project the um, it's the study here that I've got I've got the same length of 13 that I do have on my RSI indicator down here and what you can do is you can program an RSI number in for example 70 which is the uh, beginning of the overbought range and what it does is it tries to project where price is going to be if the RSI did get up to 70 using the volatility around this area and this is indicating that 177.15 would be about where the IWM gets to uh, based on current price action uh, if the RSI on the weekly did reach up to 70 so that's uh, and that's the top of the channel and you know wouldn't surprise me if we ended up getting up in that area over the next uh, several weeks if we continue the bullish price action okay QQQ Q, Q. the NASDAQ uh, the same RSI indicator course where uh, the triple Q's are st uh, the strongest uh, so far and we again have a uh, another closing high on the week closed on the high higher high higher low still still a strong uptrending channel using that reverse RSI indicator uh, if we get up to 70 that would be around 190 uh, which is just above the all-time high of 187.53 everything looks like we're headed in that direction uh, the other thing I'll point out is this little indicator I've created down here shows closes relative to the Cent, uh, not center, but a 34 exponential moving average, which is within the cloud. Um, so it's a 34 exponential moving average of the closes. And really what this is doing is showing where the close of price is on this day relative to the center. And what I'm looking for here is, is extremes. And it's getting up near the high side where it's the furthest away from the cloud before you know it tends to find uh, some pullback area like we've seen in this get up to this area and we get a pullback and we get up to this area we've had a pullback towards the cloud this was probably the highest extreme in recent time and we did have a pullback to the cloud so really what I'm looking at is how far away from the center of the cloud or within the cloud do we get before we should start thinking about maybe we'll, we'll get a, a bit of a pullback and we're kind of in that area now not quite at the extreme but uh, you know certainly within the zone of a potential pullback uh, on the queues or at least a, uh, a flattening out if you will a sideways consolidation activity which will tend to make the cloud you know, start averaging up closer towards price and then this distance starts closing on where the close is a price relative to the center of the cloud so queues still look pretty strong the diamonds uh, a little bit we're a little bit weaker they're certainly catching up we did have a a gap higher and we closed higher on the day on Friday and for the week uh, we didn't quite have a higher high than the week before but we certainly closed on the bullish side of the week towards the uh, upper end of the week and the one I'll spend a little bit more time talking about did a little bit more work on is the spy S&P 500 um, what I've done here is I took and did some time and price projections. some interesting things come out of doing that so this last big ABC correction we had on the weekly I took the low of that and I projected how many weeks to the high that we had so this is an uptrend of so many weeks 
and then I took this ABC correction on the low and I projected time-wise how far out in time could that potentially get us if we had the same symmetrical amount of time to the upside as we did after the last correction. And that takes us out to June the 13th. So if this uptrend starting from this low went as many weeks as this one did, June 13th would be a 100% time symmetry projection from that point. The other thing that I did on price was I took uh, price projections from this high, the all-time high, down to the uh, ABC correction low, and I, pro I, I projected price in a um, um, Fibonacci standpoint, uh, re a price projection from, or price retracement from that swing. And you'll see the outer one is this one here, and a 1272 extension is from this to that backwards and 127 percent projection above that gets us to this area here 31035 which is 3100 uh, for the SPY and pretty close to the same number for ES uh, which would get us out into June um, so if you look at the the cross of this price projection from and this time the 100 percent time could presumably think that we could get around this area and I'm just gonna put a little circle here on my chart that's just a zone of interest Why is that not? anyway I'll, I'll fix that but you know basically this area here um, I'll be looking for uh, an, as an area of interest around this 310 on the spy area if I do the same RSI projection by the way looking at this 63 number and what would the price be if we got up to 70 using the reverse RSI and it's around 303 again to an all-time high now the other price projection I did was from this high, this swing pivot, this B pivot on an ABC correction to the low and looking at the retracement of that and a 1618 projection exactly overlays on this 1272 you know which is uh, a little bit of a Fibonacci cluster area. Um, now I you know I find this uh, areas of interest it certainly doesn't mean that I'm suggesting that price is going to go up to 3100 uh, but it is something that I'm going to watch if we continue continue this bullish uptrend. You know where where might price end up if it does moves somewhat similar to some of the things in the past, and then looking at uh, price projections of these Fibonacci uh, retracements. Okay, so that's the spy. Certainly, we're in an uptrend. We had a higher high for the week, closed higher on the week. We did break out of this uh, consolidation area, and we did extend the range higher. So there's nothing that says to me that we're yet found an exhaustive uh, price area. We certainly see haven't seen any of the bigger money coming in to do any selling. Uh, the one thing that I will point out is if you look at the VIX, and we talked to this a little bit last week, we did have a close on Friday. Uh, we did have a touchdown to the lower end and we had some uh, increase in the VIX and a little bit of a pullback during the beginning of the week last week. We did close right near the lows and right near the lower end of the Bollinger Bands for the VIX. And you can see the last, you know, several times that we've had these kind of closes, we have had some choppy price action and, and had some relatively larger pullbacks when you've had closes outside the zone during the week so I would suggest that if history repeats itself and we continue to have a falling VIX that I'd be watching for potentially some pullbacks during the week next week just like we had uh, on this you know close on Friday we had a touch on the low closed around this mid area and the VIX ended up going up during uh, Monday Tuesday of the week Wednesday Thursday Friday were down we had up activity but the beginning area we did have some choppy price action and a little bit of a pullback here 
on uh, Tuesday. So I'll be looking for potentially a little bit of choppy price action uh, going into next week. I will also point out, we did talk about the sectors last week. Uh, JP Morgan bank earnings were strong. We had a pretty big bullish move on the financials. The uh, XLK um, you know, continues to move up. That's the technology sector. Industrials had a good week. Uh, Boeing, which has been pretty weak and, and been holding things back, you know, ended up having a pretty decent uh, Friday close. And I think we ended up, you know, getting back on track for increasing uh, growth in the XLI. And this one here is the XLY consumer discretionary. So these three sectors continue to, to be pushing upwards. One little bit of a surprise, a, a very large weighting in the S&P 500 is the um, let's see if I've got this on a chart. If I look in Yahoo, you can see how the S&P 500 is weighted in terms of sectors, right? So you've got uh, consumer cyclical, which is XLY, financials at 13.75% is a big weighting in the S&P. And healthcare at 14.5% is the second uh, largest sector of the S&P 500 next to XLK technology at almost 23%. Uh, XLV actually had a down week of about a little over 2%. Uh, Johnson & Johnson had a pretty weak uh, week, week, as did uh, United Healthcare, another uh, large name inside this sector. So that's tending to be a little bit of a drag. This down here is TLT. We've had the bonds coming off, and uh, the bonds coming off is a little bit of a risk on uh, kind of price activity. Bonds may find support. You can see there's a lot of support area down in this zone. Uh, and I'd say TLT is uh, coming into a support zone potential buy uh, around this area here. So I'd say looking at TLT in the next week, noting, noting that the uh, indexes might be due for a bit of flattening or correction. And with if bank earnings in Goldman Sachs, Bank of America, Citigroup in the beginning of the week, if any of them falter, it probably will add a little bit of um, uh, fire, a little bit of gasoline to a uh, potential fire that may happen in the beginning of the week. Everything is still uptrending. Uh, we're a ways away from the cloud, and I'm not going to look for a reversal until we're past the cloud and starting to get closes below the daily cloud. So uh, I don't see anything that's going to break this uptrend other than I think we're due for a bit of a pullback towards the cloud. The 21 exponential moving average in the top of the cloud would probably be buy zones for me. And, um, you know, everything else may be looking at taking potential profits. Just a quick look on the expected moves. We did stay within the expected moves during the week. Uh, ES, I'm just going to go to a, a larger chart and get to a daily. The expected move for the week in ES is $53. We did stay within last week's expected move. We are reaching higher highs, uptrend in place. On YM, the expected move is up here at $482, um, which gets us within striking distance of the non-contract adjusted all-time high and NQ, the strongest of all of them, uh, is expected moves $172 and actually would take us over the back adjust, uh, non-back adjusted all-time high reference of 77.2875 and uh, we certainly are within a stone's throw of that. So the levels will be out, uh, everything looks bullish, look for potential Maybe small pullback uh, based on the VIX next week, um, and maybe a larger correction in store if uh, some of the bank earnings in the beginning of the week look fairly dodgy. Other than that, everything's headed to the upside. Take care, guys.